Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Now, if you ever needed a reason to not vote for Kamala Harris, if you ever needed a reason to not align yourself with the Democrat Party, well then look no further, I've got the reason for you. All you need to do is watch this video and see some of the clips that I'm about to show you guys, and I think instantly it should be clear who exactly these people are. You know, there's one thing that I look for in leadership, and that's what I always say, it's the ability to be malleable. I've shown a bunch of examples of Trump showing his intellect malleability, his ability to change his position, kind of redirect his priorities based on what regular people are telling him or what the results are clearly indicating. You know, that's the sign of a good leader. Yeah, Democrats don't have this ability. They don't learn from their mistakes. They're ideologically driven and the facts simply don't matter. They have no regrets. They have no ability to pivot to prioritize actual voters and actual regular people, despite the fact that Kamala Harris keeps uttering these empty platitudes about how much she cares about regular people. Can we trust you? Yes. Yes. I am not perfect, but I will tell you, I'm always going to put the needs of the people first. They'll say the blanket statement, I will always put the people first. But when the people are actually in need, when the people are struggling, when the people are telling you that something isn't working or that you've damaged their livelihoods, it's not like these Democrats care. And time and time again, they express zero remorse. And now, of course, they're doing the same thing with inflation. They just want to move on and they have zero remorse in their actions and the damage that they have caused. Let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. But before we get into any of it, this video is actually brought to you guys by a sponsor. So let's play that clip. This video is brought to you guys by Ground News. Friends, you know I don't like taking too many sponsorship deals, but this is one that I have no issue with, because this is a company that not only I approve of, but it's a product that I'm signed up for and I actively use. Ground News is the greatest news aggregator on the internet. If I'm trying to keep up to date with what's going on, if I'm waking up in the morning with videos to record, if I need to jump into the topics, then Ground News is one of my go-to places. And my favorite feature happens to be the blind spot tool. All you do is scroll up to the website and click this button right over here, Ground News' innovative blind spot feature highlights all the stories that the mainstream media left is trying to ignore. Here's an example of how the tool works. We've got an article here that shows that two migrants have died trying to cross the English Channel in a small boat, so obviously highlighting the devastating costs of leftist open border policies, but as you can see, that essentially only right-wing sources are covering the story. I guess the left doesn't want to know about the death and destruction that their policies sow. But thanks to Ground News' blind spot tool, it's simply a great website, folks. I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it. I personally endorse and use Ground News. And if you guys want to join, here's the good news. Thanks to this amazing partnership, you guys, Liberal Hive Mind viewers, can take advantage of this special offer and get 40% off the Vantage Plan subscription at Ground News by clicking the link down below in the description. And yep, you heard me right. That's 40% off their Vantage Plan subscription. So what are you waiting for? Click the link so you can stay informed on all the topics Brian Stelter doesn't want you to do your own research on. A huge thank you to Ground News. Now back to the video. All right, so I want to start off with this clip. Here's Janet Yellen expressing zero remorse. Did you regret over the course of the pandemic and its aftermath, given what happened to inflation, not having reduced spending so that you weren't adding to that inflation? Look, I think it's the, it's the outset of the administration. We felt that the largest single risk facing our economy was that people would not get back to work in a timely way. Mm -hmm. And we could be faced with a real crisis of high unemployment with substantial scarring. And we put in place um, with Congress a program that was meant to address that risk. Janet Yellen has no remorse. Of course they have no remorse. Kamala Harris, same thing. I mean, for Pete's sake, she's the vice president. She was that 51 tiebreaker vote. She personally is responsible for passing all of that inflationary spending. In other words, Kamala Harris caused inflation directly. Literally, she is to blame. People have gotten poorer and poorer. And I guess the question is, is Kamala Harris taking accountability? Does she realize that bad policy led to bad results for regular people? No, of course not. She barely acknowledges inflation and blames it on Russia and grocery stores. Completely freaking insane, even as some of her top Biden surrogates, one of them now is Mark Cuban, funnily enough, admits that grocery prices have nothing to do with inflation and that actually it's big government spending. Do you think any of the 40-year highs in inflation are attributable to price gouging? And do you, do you care that that is the entire premise 
on... No, on, you're misrepresenting what she's saying, Joe. I'm watching her ads now. Okay, so then let's you, talk You've seen it. the ads. Yes, of course. Right. I, I'm going to end... I'm going to bring down... Pre- during the a crisis. Inf- okay. During a crisis. What, what, what do you think caused the 40-year... Do you, hit, do you think supermarket no, gouging had anything to do no. with... No. You think no. it was it was putting too much stimulus on top of a supply constrained? Yeah, but, yeah Biden and, and then and, it just looks to me like you're not they're not being truthful with with this, and they're trying to deflect blame. No, but it's still important, right? Because of their record. It's still important. You know, everybody knows, but they just don't care. That's the fact. I'm just gonna say it. I'm not gonna mince my words. These are bad people. These are elitist, out of touch people who don't care how their policies affect you. It's all about power. Of course, they don't regret it because what have they managed to do over the last however many years? They've managed to grow government, big bureaucratic beast known as the federal government. It's been nothing but lies and obfuscation since the start. We all remember when Janet Yellen kept going on and on how inflation isn't actually happening. There's no real risk of inflation. It'll just be transitory. You know, it might have been transitory at the time, but then they continued to spend and spend and spend and spend money that the nation could not afford to spend and that obviously was going to overheat the economy to an extreme degree, leading to hyperinflation. It started off with inflation's not an issue. Then it went to inflation's happening, but actually it's a good thing. I mean, that was the craziest one. And now it's, well, you know, inflation happened. Our spending caused it, but we don't regret it. It is what it is. Or Kamala's take, inflation doesn't actually exist. And if it does, well, blame the grocery companies. How incredibly stupid. And now beyond that, the worst part, and probably the most dishonest part, the gaslighting. After everything they've done, all the lies and the refusal of accountability, now Democrats are engaged in patting themselves on the back. The latest economic talking points coming out of the Democrat Party and just the Democrat media apparatus as a whole has been that actually the economy is really good. What are you complaining about? Our stock portfolios are through the roof. Our homes are worth double. The economy's doing great. I don't know, what is this, phase three, phase four? Attempt to paint this story of economic success. It's unbelievable. And what's the crux of their argument? The stock market, of course. It's just crazy. You know, let's just ask a simple question. Who benefits from stock market gains? Well, like I always say, and according to the data, it's the top 10% of Americans. The top 10% of Americans own over 80% of all stocks. That means that when stock prices rise, it's the wealthiest individuals who benefit. Then, of course, we've got the rise in asset prices. I've been going on for years talking about the asset class. Well, again, who benefits? Who benefits when asset prices rise, particularly home prices? Obviously, it's the wealthy, but it's not just who's benefiting, it's also who's losing, you know? Who's the loser in it all? That's the question people ought to be asking themselves. And of course, it's regular people and young people. You know, it's wild to me that young people are so brainwashed by all the culture war nonsense. It's crazy that young people support Kamala Harris after Kamala Harris ruined their chances at the American dream. Sounds a little bit extreme, but it's true. The housing market is a prime example of how inflated asset prices makes life more difficult for regular people and especially young people. Home prices have skyrocketed in the past decade, mostly outpacing wage growth. And this, of course, makes home ownership, which is the traditional way that regular people build wealth, well, it's created this situation where owning a home or home ownership has become out of reach for so many young Americans and even old Americans. Your purchasing power has decreased tremendously since Democrats took power. As a young person, you're already steps behind. You haven't accumulated wealth yet. You haven't even really started. Well, could you imagine before you even start, in a matter of a couple of years, not only are you behind, but you're now two times behind where you would have been had they not printed trillions of dollars and boosted the cost of living across the board. You know, left-wing advocates love pointing at the stock market highs as a proof that the economy is booming, but the reality is that this boom is largely confined to a small segment of the population, and it's mostly artificially driven by all the money printing that's gone on over the last couple of years. Rising stock and asset prices widen the gap between the wealthy and the rest, making it harder for regular people to catch up or even maintain a basic standard of living. Instead of celebrating a booming stock market, the focus should be on policies that address wage stagnation, affordable housing, and the cost of living concerns. But obviously, Democrats have no concern there. They just feign concern. They pretend as if they care. The people. Oh, I care so much about the people. But when they're presented with evidence that people are struggling, they dismiss it. They pretend as if it's not happening. They call it a conspiracy theory. And when asked if they regret decisions that they made in the past that led to bad outcomes for regular people, they're answer is it's not happening, it's not actually real, it's just grocery chains price gouging people. How anybody can support this crap is just beyond my comprehension. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.